our general manager for the Malaysian Conservation Alliance for Tigers. And we're here to talk about the Malayan Tiger. Thank you very much for taking time off your busy schedules to be with us. Off the airwaves, I was talking to this man about academia and his, the, the list of things he's done is this long. Seriously, it's this long. We need a scroll for it, not paper. But amazing work you guys are doing. Congratulations for the great work done and thank you very much for being in Malaysia for such a long time. <laughs> what kept you here, Kate? Tiger. Tiger. But, yeah. Have you seen it? Because when, when I interviewed her, I yeah. interviewed her on Radio 4, uh, what, in the year 2000, 2004, I'm not too sure, but she hadn't seen a tiger then. Have you seen one? No, and I don't think I'm going to see any. There yeah. are very few left right. in the wild. So from what we know, there are, what, 250 left, uh, something to that effect. How did we come up with these numbers? 250 was 2014 figure. Okay. And so that 250 tiger uh, population estimate was based on data collected between 2010 to 13. Okay. So it's quite outdated. Mm -hmm. So the latest now is much less than 200. It's much less than less, 200. Much it's fewer less than, than 200. 200. Yeah, right. fewer so than 200. Melvin, how, how are you in this mix? Well, we work on the land, in the landscape mm -hmm. and we are putting people on the ground to working with the government to try to uh, protect as many uh, uh, tigers as possible. Right. Uh, I've been involved with Kai in trying to protect tigers for a long time. I've known her for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. And part of the issue we have had way back then was the numbers are plummeting, the numbers are decreasing. So for example, someone asked me just now, how many tigers does that mean? I said, look at a Boeing 737, 100 plus animals. If we're, uh, 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 you can fit probably less than 200 people into a Boeing 737, that's the Malaysian population inside one aeroplane. Right, hang on, just hold on to this. Uh, uh, Dr. Kai, what do we see here? Tiger's extinction process. What can you tell us from this graph? Okay, um, making a long story short. Okay, so the worldwide, we have left 97% of the tiger habitat. So in the last 100 years, 97% uh, percent of the tiger habitat has been lost and 100,000 tigers, now there are only 3,500 tigers left in worldwide. Whereas Malaysia, since uh, independence in the 1950s, that was the first time that the population, there was a population estimate of 3,000 tigers. Now less than, much less than 200 tigers left. We pretty much lost Malaysia has lost about 95% of the tigers. Right. And that's not because forests are gone. Mm -hmm. That's because of the poaching. How did we do it? How, how did we, we champion this losing tigers? How did we champion this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, we're great at championing the wrong things, you know, as a nation. Uh, so, see, in when we had several hundred tigers in the 1990s, we yeah. actually viewed that we actually have enough anti-poaching personnel on the ground and so forth. Right. That was in the 1990s, and it wasn't. It was also a time when China had not flexed its muscles. Indo Chinese had not flexed its muscles. The number of poachers going down to the ground was not many. Right, right. We had an adequate number of personnel. Can we back like on China flexing its muscles? Now? How is that tying with us? They want more, uh, they want tiger products, they want pangolins, they want a whole bunch of other animals mm -hmm. to feed into the craving, if you will. Oh, the craving of what, aphrodisiacs or, or, or? Those mm -hmm. for other products for medicinal purposes that they view that they, and p other, other things which people just want to eat, you right. know, uh, exotic animals. Now, back then in 1990s, we had enough adequate personnel. But when the demand became huge, the numbers of people roaming into our forest increased. Mm -hmm. We actually need to take stock. But I do understand we also had a problem with corruption, or we still do have a problem with corruption when it comes to, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, what do you call that? Making sure that enforcement is uh, keeping to its word by doing its job. It's uh, it's something which we hear of, but we don't really know. See, about. we find it so hard to talk about it. Also, yeah. just 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 to broach the subject. It, it, but by and large, on the ground, do you think this is a problem? When we work with people on the field, mm -hmm. we find that when we ask them, we need to walk that extra kilometer. They do walk with us for that right. extra kilometer. It's not the people on the ground that are trying to protect those those animals. Those people passionately care, and they will walk with us. We walk for seven days, they will walk with us. There are others, what you're referring to corruption, on the other side of things, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in a different agency, in charge of ports, in, in charge of all those things. I'm not privy to that kind of information. Right. You hear of it, 
you hear several tons of pangolins going through how did it all happen again we don't go into that we are not in that field in in ports and, and we so we don't know enough of the, those to say that it's directly done but you you the amount of bad news is troubling if right. you want to use that word. right so we're going to come back to you with political will shortly coming back to you dr guy let's talk about um how important the Malayan tiger is to biodiversity or to our biodiversity here in Malaysia? Mm, okay, I think one of the, if I can talk about one of the big misconceptions of saving tiger mm -hmm. is it's really not about saving tigers as a species because right. they do so well in zoos. So tiger will never go extinct mm -hmm. because they're in a zoo. But saving tiger really means saving the healthy forest, which our lives also depend on. So tiger being top of the food chains, they uh, regulate the number of prey, and these prey regulate the uh, uh, plants, and so we are all connected. Right. So saving tigers. So so the top of the food chain. So sorry for cutting in. On the top of the food chain here in Malaysia are tigers. Yes, if it's not human. <laughs> right. So so. So another word for politician would, would be, I, I don't know, I'm just guessing, yeah, for top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. uh, but going back to what you were saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So tiger being foot, top of the food chain and also the keystone species. Mm -hmm. We're using tiger as a flagship species. But saving tiger really means saving tapirs, elephants, deer, pigs, uh, people's livelihood, pollinations, ecological services, everything, everything inclusive. So losing tiger means... It's just a symptom of ecosystem imbalance, ecosystem yeah. crisis. So and I think we all can feel being, it. Being in Malaysia from 1997. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you for yeah, remembering yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, how have you seen things change? Have you seen things change 1997 till now? What, easy, close to 20 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the rate of develop, development in Kuala Lumpur is tremendous. And I must say that also the level of awareness among the, especially the educated Crown Valley citizens, are uh, rapidly raising, uh, rising too. So they are very well aware. But what is lacking is really the action. Mm -hmm. Awareness alone is not enough. And what tigers really need now mm -hmm. is, is, is actually one action. We had, uh, when 2006, when we met and came up with a blueprint for right. the national we met, met with uh, government and NGOs and right. universities, we wanted to Any have a Any names blueprint. in particular, the people you met? Uh, no, not that you know of, okay. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. there was a blueprint? Yeah, <laughs> blueprint yeah. for yeah. the saving targets for the nation, right? So we had 200, 200 actions needed. It's not There is no silver bullet saving tigers. Mm -hmm. That had been boiled down to 80, so the National Tiger Conservation Action Plan had 80 priority actions. What we see today, tigers on the brink of extinction, is basically the results of collectively failing, failing to implement this conservation action plan. And tiger needs now one action. So we had a blueprint, but we've collectively failed, failed. To, to see through, yes. to, to implement it. Yes. Right. Uh, would you like to add on to what she's saying? It, 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 in, it yes. looks disturbed. <laughs> yeah, I am disturbed. <laughs> yeah. If we can't save one major important iconic species in our emblem, what can we save? Do, f what about all these smaller animals which don't have a presence as much as that? We need people to understand that this iconic animal represents us. Now, if I were to be cheeky enough to ask the camera to focus on you while I do this one thing on you, right. okay, can you turn, look at him? Okay, can I, okay. I'll, I'll turn and look at the camera. Or should we just do the single okay. camera? Okay. Now, hmm. I ask you to hold your breath for 10 seconds. Now, okay. one, stop. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, nine, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, now yeah. picture this. That thing that you wanted, the only thing that you wanted was air. No money can buy you that air. And that air can't come from our forest. Our, the marine, mar the plankton in the seas. We need that. We need to have people appreciate and understand that environment is important. Tigers are used as an icon for those i can't put an insect out and tell them protect this insect nobody would care to hoots about it but if i put something as large and as iconic as a tiger out there we had hope that people would 
realize that it's important. You travel a lot across Malaysia. I assume you travel and, and you know about the environment a lot. You go into hotels in towns. I bet you, you took two of those cards to stick inside rooms when you go out so that you can come back and it's cold. You are aware of the environment, but you still do it. We need this action. Guy's following me around. Yeah, we need action. We don't need just awareness. We can't have awareness. Everybody, a lot of people know about awareness. It needs to be done now. Sadly, that thing is taking people beyond the awareness is something which we have been trying to say. The tigers, they don't have much time. There is hope. But we need to take it right to the end. We need to protect these animals. Right. So now you talk about a need to protect the animals. You talk about you talked about political will. Are you seeing this now? We have been seeing. Is that a smile or a grimace? Yeah. Are, are we seeing this now today in Malaysia? You know, we we talk about hope. We talk a lot about hope. Are we? Do we have hope? Are we hopeful about this? Ladies first. Ladies first, Dr. Okay. Kai. Kai um, Nishi, over to you. Thank you. A lack of political will um, has been the problem for tiger conservation, not only in Malaysia, throughout the tiger ranch countries. Uh, I have I have I was already convinced in 2013 when I wrote the article about lack of political is basically is killing tigers in this yeah. country. So you wrote the article in 2013. It was, yeah. It was in the reign of a different government or what we know as a regime different, today. Yes, yeah. different okay. government. Yeah. So I am hopeful that new government will do the right thing uh, fast. Okay. It has so, to be done very fast. So two, two words you use here, right thing and fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, wh what is the right thing and how fast? And okay. who do we need, I think, Good to add question. to that? Yeah. Good question. Okay. So what is the right thing? Okay, 80 actions that was needed for tigers for the sustainable long-term conservation, we failed that. Now, since last August, NGO has been advocating one action that is needed for Malayan tiger. That is the 2,000 soldiers, trained soldiers on the ground protecting mm -hmm. tigers. Full time, not just once in a while, full right. time. That is what needed. That's the minimum because from the So which means this tigers, is a call out to the Minister of Defense, yeah? Call maybe, out to the government. To the government, not, okay. Yeah, right, because we right. have to go through our uh, Okay, we need, we well. need uh, to do the, our due diligence, uh, go yeah, through the processes. Sure. We need 2,000 soldiers on the ground. We've got two minutes left, two minutes left, okay. What else do we need? That's it. That's, That's it. really needed, needed. Supportive of what Kai said, mm -hmm. uh, committed personnel on the ground to try to protect these animals. Because... There are other instant, other countries in the world that have actually turned this around. Yeah. You look at Nepal, you look at various places in, in Some India. Some African countries have turned yeah. it around. You look too. at uh, one particular uh, protected area in Thailand. This is doable. The cat can come back. Mm -hmm. But we need to do it now. We can't mm -hmm. let ourselves be another Cambodia, another Vietnam, and parts of Myanmar, Laos. Laos. Right. We can't Myanmar. allow that to They're happen. Lost. Right. So... What would be your message in about 40 seconds to Malaysians? What help do you need for Malaysians? Please look at the camps, talk to Malaysia, talk to your country. We need to make sure that the, the enforcement personnel go down to the ground. We need to make sure that they report wildlife crime. We need to work with, the power, with those in enforcement to try to get those things down. In terms of when Dr. Kai is involved, more volunteers going down to the ground to be the eyes and ears to protect these animals. This is your animal. It's not mine. It is ours. We need it to survive. It will be a hollow Malaysia if we have a coat of arms and no tigers on the side. Picture that one. Right. Dr. Kai will give you the last say before we uh, close the segment. Thank you. Tigers need 2,000 soldiers on the ground full time. That's the minimum. If Nepal can do it with 8,000 soldiers, why can't Malaysia do it for the Malayan tiger? Right. Thank you. On that note, it was a pleasure and an honor having you here in conjunction with uh, International Wildlife Day. Thank you very much. Uh, Melvin, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank uh, Dr. You, Kai, uh, stay on for another decade and help us see this thing through. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. <laughs> on that note, uh, we're going to be taking a short break. Stay with us right here on Brindama today. Uh, we'll be having some interesting guests coming in to talk about shoes. We're having a shoemaker coming in. Of course, just after the break, Tamina Kalsky will join me right here on Monday's edition of Bernama Today. Stay with us.